All right, the next thing we're going to do is collectibles. So, so far we have frogs and let's take these frogs and just, let's drag all of them and just move them to the right a little bit. Let's actually move them a little further. And then here we're gonna have some collectibles. So let's do that. Let's um, close this and let's add a new scene. Let's close the player and frog. We don't need that anymore. And let's go to other node. And we're going to create an area 2D. This is going to be the perfect thing for a collectible because this is essentially just going to check for a player, right? So let's add another collision or another node and a collision shape. And let's give it a shape, a circle. And here, uh, I think an animated sprite is probably perfect. And I will explain why in a second. So here, um, I think we all we have is cherries. I think that's the only thing we have. Yeah, that's how all we have. So let's go to animated sprite. Let's create an animation for it. Let's actually go into the animation. We'll just say idle. And let's just drag all these frames in. And there we go. We now have our cherry. Let's actually play it. So we can do that by doing that. And now what we can do is make sure we just... Actually, we can just keep it in the middle like that. That's fine. And then let's actually try to give it the proper shape. So let's actually lock this, take the collision shape, and kind of give it a nice shape here. All right, <clears throat> let's save this as cherry. Let's create a new folder. So we'll say collectibles. Save it. Let's go to area 2D. Name it cherry. We'll add a script. We'll go to node we'll create it and now what we can do is save this and then we're going to delete all this we're going to go to cherry and go to node i'm going to say and body entered and this is really easy because we can just say if body dot name is equal to player then we can q3 and I, would, I hope you would assume you know what we're going to do. We're just going to add to our gold. Uh, if you want to make a cherry like stat, you can do that. But I'm just going to add to our gold. So let's add five. And now let's go to our world scene. And let's close all this. Let's go to our collectible. Here it is. And drag that in. Let's create a new node so, or a new container for that. So this is going to be our <clears throat> collectibles. All right. Let's add that in. And there's going to be a very good reason why I'm going to be doing collectibles is because, so let's play. When we play, what is happening? Ah, I do, I know what's happening. What's happening is our player's HP is below zero. And so when I go to that scene, it's uh, going back to the main menu. Okay, so here's our cherry. When I collect it, it Q freeze. Okay, so that's cool, but how do I make it a little nicer, a little smoother, so it, it kind of feels more like a game? Well, Godot has this really nice thing called tween. So what we can do is we'll tween it. So instead of just queuing free right away, what we can do is we're going to say get, actually we'll say variable tween equals get tree dot create tween. So here we have timer and tween. We'll do timer in a second, but for now let's do tween. And then what we can do is say tween dot um, tween property between property there it is we're going to tween the property so what this is as you can see we can see a few um things that we can add so object property the node path final value and then duration you can't really see it but that's what it says duration so the object is which object do we want to tween well we want to tween the cherry right so self right or we can actually say get node whatever and then drag this in but we could just say self in this case all right and then the property node path so the property is, well, the property, right? So the position in this case, right? So we want to between the position. So position, and then what is the final position that we want it to be in? Well, we can say position minus vector two, zero, 150. So what does this mean? Basically, the final value is going to, we're going to take the original value, subtract 150 to the y-axis. Why, why are we subtracting and not adding? Well, because if you can actually look here, so if we zoom in a little bit, it's hard to see, but if you kind of pay attention on the left-hand side, you can see negative 5, negative 10, and it goes upwards in negatives, right? On the x-axis, you can see that it's negative on the x-axis here, just normally, and then goes positive in the y and the x-axis on this side, right? Now in the y-axis, it's reversed, right? So Godot actually does this, and so we need to make sure we subtract and not add. Okay, and then the duration will be like, I don't know, one second. And then this is the perfect part. Instead of saying Q free right away or waiting or ask, creating a timer, what we can do is we can say tween dot um, tween callback, 
And then from here, we can actually say something. So callback, the callable is, is a function or like something that I want to do, right? So in this case, I can just say Q free. Now it, in this case, we don't actually call the function. We just call or call the function with brackets. We just say Q free like that. And then we can delete that. And now when we play, I play and now it goes up. It takes about a second. It goes up 150. That's a little too much. So why don't we do like 50? Let's play around with this number. Let's play. It goes up about 50. That's a little, that's not bad, but let's try one more time. Let's do, let's do like 0.3. And then for this, we'll do like 25. All right, let's play one more time. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, awesome. That's not bad. And we've kind of started something, but now what? There's something else I could do. Well, I could interpolate the property of something else. And if you're thinking you could make it invisible. So this is actually a very good trick is to do two things at once. We're going to tween two things. Essentially, we're going to tween the position to make it go up. And then we're also going to tween the visibility. So if you go to visibility, we can see modulate is a thing. So we can modulate this to become invisible slowly like that. So it looks like it's disappearing, right? So to do that, we basically copy paste this. We're going to say self instead of position. We're going to say modulate modulate. We have to make sure we spell this right. And we're going to do the A. So we're going to say modulate to zero. So we can just take all this and say zero because we're going to take our modulate A. So modulate this guy, the A value, and we're going to take it from 225, 55, sorry. And we're going to go all the way to zero. Now the duration we might want to do, I eh, will do at 0.3. Let's see what we get. So let's play and see what we get. All right, so there you go. So now it kind of looks like it becomes invisible as we collect it. Why don't we create, let's play around with these a little bit. So let's do like 35, we'll do 0.2, and 0.35 for that. And then play, all right, there we go. Now, something you may notice is, it's hard to notice, but it doesn't start becoming invisible essentially until this is done. So this goes, and then this goes. So the total time is about 0.5. So what we have to do is essentially create another tween. We have to say tween one and then make this here. And then let's play one more time. Or ooh, yeah, we're gonna wanna tween after that. So let's play one more time, sorry. And let's see, there we go. So now it actually looks a little better. So it looks like we're actually becoming invisible over time. Now you can play around with these numbers. I will right now, you can see me playing around with them. And there you go, that's a pretty nice Queen collected. Okay. <clears throat> the last thing I want to teach is timers. So let's take a look at timers. So let's go to collectibles. Let's create this. Let's delete all this. Now what we'll do is there's two options. We can either add a timer node, right? So here, or we can actually create a node or a, a tween or timer. So we can say here, get tree. No, we can't say get tree. We can say create timer, but not outside of here. It has to be inside of a ready function, but we're not actually going to do this. We're just going to use the node instead. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually delete this cherry. And the reason being is because what we're going to do is we're going to spawn in children. So we're going to be learning two things, timer and spawning in the children. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to say variable cherry equals load, no preload. And then we have to find the cherry. Oh, look at that, it's right there. So you have to find the path of the cherry. So if you don't know where it is, it doesn't. if it didn't pop up for you right away, that's okay. What you can do is go to the cherry on the left. You can either drag it in, right? So you can take it, drag it in, and it'll give you the path. Or what you can do is go right click, and there should be a copy path or control shift C. All right, and then you can see here, if I go over here and try to copy paste over it, it'll work fine. But then you have to make sure it's, in, it's as a string. Okay, next up is a ready function. Let's actually, nope, not a ready function. What we're gonna do is we're gonna now connect a signal from the timer. So if we go to the timer and go to the signals, we can see the timeout timer, the timeout function. We're gonna connect that to the collectibles. So let's go here. And what we're gonna do, I just realized I spelled cherry wrong. We're in here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say variable um, cherry, I keep saying cherry with an A, I don't know why. Cherry temp, and then we're gonna say cherry dot instantiate. This is essentially going to allow us to actually create it. So we're gonna create this thing. We're gonna have it in our hand. Now, 
<clears throat> to actually do something with it. So we've essentially taken this cherry and put it in our hand. Now we want to actually add it into the scene, right? So to do that, all we can do is say add child, and then we're going to add the cherry temp. <clears throat> and that's it. So let's play and see what we get. Well, we're not going to get anything because we have to actually start the timer. So <clears throat> if you go over here to the right, we can see auto start and we have to turn that on. So let's do that. Let's play. And we, nothing happens, obviously. So let's go to remote and see what's happening. So we can see here we have a bunch of cherries. They're being created. But what's happening? We need to actually do something with it, right? So if you actually added them, it's hard to see, but hmm, maybe I can play around with this. You can see them at the top left. It's very hard to see, but they're at the top left. What's happening is that all these cherries that we've created are at position zero. So what we can do before we add it, we can say cherry.temp.position equals vector2. And from this, we have to actually kind of look at the position. So we'll say 296. So we'll say 296, and then the position will say 100. Okay, let's play and see what we get. Play. And now we can see the cherries are up there. Let's actually lower it a little bit because it's really high up. We want to say, hmm, not sure why it's not doing that. Let's, uh, let's do this as 400. Let's try one more time and see where they're being created. Oh, that's why. This is the x-axis, not the y-axis. I mixed them up. My apologies. All right, let's try one more time. There we go. And now it'll be created on the floor. But there's a problem. As you can see, they're always being spawned in that one position. So let's create it on the ground, but randomize it throughout the ground, right? So to do that, we can go over here. We can say variable RNG dot or equals random number generator dot new. Now, what is this? We can say one more thing we'll say is random rand int equals rand dot f i believe it's rng yeah rng dot random i and then the random i let's take a look at what this does now if you ever wonder what something does if you kind of see a function like this and you don't know what it does we, we can do this is a very great tip if you hit control hold control and then hover the thing the function and click it it'll take you to what it is. Okay, so random i returns a pseudo blah, 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 between zero and something, something. That's not exactly what we want. In fact, if we look right below that, we'll see something a little better. Randy range, this will allow us to go from something to something. So this is actually works a little better for what we want. We don't want a completely random number all the way to this number because that's a really large number that I'm not even gonna try to say. So let's go back here. And instead of Randy, we're gonna say Randy range. Awesome. Now, what range do we want this from? Let's say 10 to 400. So this will essentially give us a random range between 10 to 400 and then place it anywhere from 10 to 400 on the x-axis. So let's go back to our script and actually use this as the x-axis. I will almost put in the y-axis again. Silly me. All right, let's play. And now we can see it's somewhat more randomized. There we go. So now it's actually more random and it's being spawned in properly. And one other thing you can do is change the timer. You can change it to like three seconds, four seconds, whatever you want. And that's it. That's the timer. And we've learned how to use the timer and we use how to add children. So this is actually a very good tool to use. We can always add children. One other tip you can do. So let's say that's actually, this is completely for educational purposes. This isn't actually going to solve anything, but let's create a node here. And let's say I want to spawn all my children here instead, right? Let's say, let's say you're spawning mobs instead of um, a cherry, right? What I can do is I can say get node, and then I can add those children to that node instead. So I can do this. So get node, node 2D, add children, cherry temp. Right, so it'll add all the children in here instead of collectible, right? So when I play, let's go to remote. <clears throat> let's actually play and see what's happening. Let's go back to world, let's go back to collectibles. Cherry, cherry. Oh, there we go. So now we can see all our chairs are being add, added to the node 2D. 
Awesome. That's it for the cherries. Okay, and that's the end of the course. I hope you guys really enjoyed this course. It was a lot of fun doing it together with you guys. And if you guys would like to see more content like this, definitely check out my channel. It'll be in the link down below. And if you guys want, I have a Discord that you can definitely check out and join. If you need any help with this course, I will always be around to try and help. Um, I have a bunch of other series as well on my channel, so definitely go check those out, such as an RPG series, a uh, farming series where we kind of go through how to kind of recreate uh, some different variety of, of farming games. And I believe I also have one that's kind of like an action uh, survivor.io game. And so that one's kind of interesting. And recently or soon, I will be releasing a 3D RPG series. That'll be a lot of fun. So definitely go subscribe to my channel and check that out. And if you guys like Godot, definitely use it for all your future projects. It's a lot of fun and it's really simple. And Godot is, is always growing and it's really cool to see that. So definitely check that out and I will see you guys around hopefully. Bye-bye.